it, it's weird. I will make videos on licensing that I feel like are pretty interesting videos, and judging by, you know, people having their discussions in the comment sections, like, in videos that aren't related to that one, it seems like licensing is this topic that a lot of people in the, the FOSS space are really interested in, and maybe that was the case, like, a couple of years ago, but I think we're actually sort of getting into this this space where... Linux is kind of branching out of just the FOSS people, especially now that we have, you know, the Steam Deck is obviously... Yeah. Are you still there? Discord just froze for a moment. Um, like, you've mm-hmm. got the Steam Deck now, where now you've got a lot more of the Linux gamers, and you had Proton yeah. for a thing, like, quite a while now. So, mm-hmm. using Linux isn't just a thing that only the FOSS people are doing now, and I guess the proportion of people that are using Linux that actually care about the license and about how things are licensed I don't think the like raw number is going down but the the overall it, it looks like a lot less because of that that growth that Linux has been having yeah definitely that's that's actually a really cool observation I see on reddit all these people like presumably kids mm. that are getting into the Steam Deck, they're getting into Linux, and they're like, whoa, you just pass in these parameters and all the performance changes and stuff. Like, you know, like, you know what's funny is back in XP and mm. Vista and 7, you could do that too. Like, that's how Windows, like, you pass in all these crazy parameters and get, get games and stuff to behave different. And mm. now with Windows 10 and 11, it's just like, this is how it runs, and there's really not much you can do to t- fine tune it or whatever. And then you go over to Linux, and there there is definitely a type of techy tinkery person that mm. likes that. Like for a long time, I personally like denied the fact that I like it when my system breaks. Like, isn't isn't that crazy? Like, but you know what I'm talking about, no, right? I know, like, I know exactly what you something mean. something screws up, and I'm like, all right, I'm rolling up my sleeves, and we're gonna get to the bottom of it. And what's cool about it is a lot of times after fighting with that challenge, I'm like, I'm smarter and I'm better equipped to deal with issues like that. Like for me personally, I like that. Mm-hmm. And I can see how not everybody is like that, but I like it. No, I use Arch. So like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so that that's your jam. Exactly. Well, I sort of, I've, I've sort of turned my system breaking into a job. So like there is that as well, mm-hmm. but even just yeah. when I was like first starting to use Linux, I you know I, I did enjoy it when something as long as I didn't have like an assignment due or something at the time. But when I wasn't super busy with other things, if something went wrong, like that's you know that's an opportunity to to learn something new about your system. Like hey, I didn't understand the way that GPG keys worked, for example, and my my um my keys had expired in my uh, package manager. So now I have to sure. go update that list, and because I'm going to update it, I might as well like look into why that's a thing that needs to be updated. Why, mm-hmm. why this is a thing that we have connected to our packages, or sure. uh, a recent issue with um with Grub where there was like oh. this broken version of Grub shift, and oh yeah, yeah, you, you got burned by that too. I uh, I skipped Man. the uh, affected version, so I didn't I didn't have any like bootloader issues with it, but oh, um, yeah, it like that's an opportunity to like look into why this is the case. Maybe not look into it as much as you know I might do for a video where I'm going to read some mailing lists for three hours, but <laughs> it's still an opportunity to look into sort of why this happened and why the bootloader functions in this fashion. Maybe even sure. look at what other bootloaders might be available. Like, hey, is this a chance to try out system deboot or refined or maybe sure. even go like uh just you know, straight UEFI boot and just skip the bootloader altogether. Yeah, yeah, totally. My uh, I'm I have I've uh, graduated from QA and software. Uh, I mean, I guess it is a software engineering. I'm like a systems engineer, basically, mm. like some people would call it DevOps. I don't like the term DevOps very much. I'm just a operations dude. But when something breaks and screws up like that, my thought is like, OK, this will never happen again. Mm. I am going to find a way to script this so this never breaks mm. or screws up again. 
So that's, I, I wouldn't have that drive had I not used Linux and had my system break. And it's, it, don't get me wrong, like it's painful. You know, like I remember one time I wanted to show a friend something. I was running OpenSUSE a long time ago and I did an update and every the display drivers were gone, like nothing worked. And like, that's really frustrating and it was embarrassing, but like, damn it, it was character building and I'm a better person because that happened. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what I tell myself anyway. Well, you gotta convince yourself somehow the Linux problems are like good for you. Can't you? Yeah. We can't just sit <laughs> around medicine. just complaining everything's bad all the time. We gotta gotta like convince other people outside of Linux that you know it's not it's not all bad. You know, the grass is actually greener on the other side. Come over here, come experiment yeah. with it, see what it's like. 